coming, freedom is coming, oh yes I know. Freedom is coming, freedom is coming, freedom is coming, oh yes I know. Freedom is coming, freedom is coming. Greetings on this second Sunday after Pentecost. For today's worship from St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Williamsburg, Virginia, I'm joined by Lisa Bell, Dean Gordon, Ruth Gordon, and Tom Hale, and I'm Lisa Green. Our music is led by Phaedra McNorton, Mike Fager, the St. Martin's Choir, and in a 2008 recording, Maurice Jones. If you haven't already, I invite you to create your worship space before we begin. You may wanna light a candle and add a cross, some flowers, an icon or other art to worship God in the beauty of holiness. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, 
I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the, the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read from Psalm 116, alternating by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the nature of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear God. Oh, 
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. Jesus, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts no bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff. For laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise like serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testament to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you have not gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Keep us, O God, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. Amen. That collect Today's opening prayer feels so appropriate for this moment for the church, capital C, and for our church, this congregation of St. Martin's. As you know, I often delight in how liturgy imitates life, the synchronicity of how our prayers and readings line up with what's going on in the world around us. Today's reading from Genesis seems to pick up where we left off last week on Trinity Sunday with the coming of three mysterious strangers to Abraham and Sarah. 
their meeting is famously depicted in a 15th century Russian icon by Andrei Rublev called the Trinity or the hospitality of Abraham. And this story is what the writer of the letter to the Hebrews seems to be alluding to in saying, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. That verse may have inspired our own St. Martin of Tours, who, as you probably know, shared his cloak with someone in need. But you might not know the rest of that story, how in a dream that night, that stranger was revealed to be Jesus himself, inspiring Martin to be baptized and eventually to leave the army to become a soldier for Christ, founder of a monastery and finally a bishop. It's a slippery slope. Hospitality also figures into the gospel reading that we just heard. Jesus is sending the disciples out to receive the hospitality of their own people, those he calls the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Proclaim the good news, he tells them. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Let your peace come upon those you meet, and if it is not received or welcomed, let it return to you. And all of that, I think, is summarized pretty well in the Collect. Proclaim God's truth with boldness and minister God's justice with compassion. And remember that you do all of that through grace, all the while held in God's steadfast faith and love. So what does all that mean for us at St. Martin's right now in this time of facing, as Catherine Meeks said in our conversation Wednesday night, both the modern pandemic of COVID-19 and the historical pandemic of racism that has been here and won't go away. It's a time that feels scary, unnerving, uncertain, she said, like so many things have been turned upside down but it's also a time of hope. I've been inspired this past week by what I've heard from St. Martin's parishioners who are hearing the call to proclaim truth and minister justice in a new way these days. We devoted our regular monthly outreach meeting Tuesday night to talking about racial healing, and several of us shared feeling drawn to having honest conversations with people close to us family members, and friends. Sometimes that's the most challenging place, to proclaim God's truth that the lives of our black and brown siblings matter, to share our longing for God's kingdom of justice and compassion to come near. It can be a place of suffering. Of course, not the kind of suffering endured by those who live with racial prejudice and injustice every day. Not, as Melanie said last week, a place of fear for our lives, but only fear of discomfort. But thanks be to God, even that minimal chosen suffering will, as Paul says, produce endurance and character and hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. It comes back to hospitality, I think. Not only hospitality, hospitality to those we engage with, our fellow lost sheep who will receive our peaceful overtures or not, but also hospitality to our own discomfort to the roller coaster of emotions that this journey towards wholeness invites. As someone said, the truth will set you free, but first it will make you really miserable. Can we be hospitable to that minor misery, to confusion, awkwardness, irritation, guilt, grief, the pain of admitting to ourselves and to others that we're works in progress. 
I have long loved a poem by Rumi, the 13th century Persian poet and mystic, translated by Coleman Barks, The Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Jesus' call to the disciples is bold, seemingly out of reach for us. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. But if we can be as hospitable to our growing pains as Abraham and Sarah were to their divine visitors, we too may experience miraculous transformations in our hearts and in our communities. After all, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Amen. Let us proclaim the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan and Jay, our bishops, for all lay and ordained ministers, for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist, resist evil, unite the human families of bonds of love, God of freedom, Hear our prayers for the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice but their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice, hear our prayers for the earth. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, especially for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Angelina, Gary Ripple, Nicholas Carey, Carrie Fuqua, Matthew, Violet, Don Noble, Margaret Payne, Seth Smith, and Donovan, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down 
by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy, hear our prayers for all who are in need. God of grace, we pray for those who have died and the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice. For prophets who called us to racial reconciliation. For martyrs who have died because of hatred and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God of grace, hear our prayers for those who have died. Almighty God, who created us in your image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression and that we may reverently use our freedom, help us to employ it in the creation and maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and one another. Almighty God, source of all that is, giver of every good gift. You create all people in your image and call us to love one another as you love us. We confess that we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are while making judgments of others based on the color of skin or the shape of features or the varieties of human experience. We have tried to love our neighbors individually while yet benefiting from systems that hold those same neighbors in oppression. Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see you as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be beloved community united in our diversity, even as you are one with Christ and the Spirit, holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements before we conclude. At the end of the service, we will invite you to exchange the peace. And if you're worshiping by yourself, it's a great time to call someone and extend the peace of Christ to them or to greet those you're with. We're all connected in the communion of saints. Sunday morning's uh, lectionary study has a new link, so check that out in the email uh, that came with this worship service. And um, this coming Friday, our Summer Meals for Kids program in Williamsburg is starting up, so um, be sure to check out the sign up link for that in our Keeping in Touch email. Um, that will continue through the summer, and we're partnering again with Williamsburg Unitarian Universalists. And also this Friday, and not 
the following Sunday, as I inaccurately reported last week, is Juneteenth. Uh, June 19th, 9 a.m., um, there'll be a service at Bruton Parish in the churchyard outside, uh, and we're all invited to be part of that, which will include a, a commitment uh, towards uh, working for peace and justice. Thank you for all that you are doing in that regard, and thank you so much to my fellow worship leaders today. It's been a joy. And now, may God bless you with discomfort, with easy answers, half-truths, superficial relationships, so that you will live from deep within your hearts. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, abuse, and exploitation of people, so that you will work for justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you will reach out your hand to comfort them and to change their pain to joy. And may God bless you with the foolishness to think you can make a difference in this world so that you will do the things which others tell you cannot be done. And the blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. My friends, the peace of Christ is always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. I saw Saint Martin. Coming after me, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, the sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. I'm sometimes up, sometimes down. Coming for to carry me home, but still my soul feels heavenly bound. Coming for to carry me home, swing low, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home, swing low, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming to carry me home. I saw Saint Martin coming after me, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. I saw Saint Martin, he couldn't catch me. Coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming forth to carry me home.